but that does take us to our go ahead blackmail. And segment. who is it directed to? Wait, hold on. Let me. It's all of us. Okay. This you is know, you Cynthia. Know, look, you, whenever he needs these blackmail, he gets excited. Yeah. You know, we've been insulted. Oh, in these. And, and hey, hey, yo, like one. <laughs> Please keep writing us. This is the thing. Like, we we love when people don't agree with us. We mm-hmm. love to have Who's a conversation a about people <laughs> who do not agree with us. So please keep sending black mail. Info at one hood. That's the number one info at one hood. Because when somebody uses the word sickening, mm. like, that's when you know they come in on, like, oh, we got- pure yeah. smoke, right? So... The the t- the subject of this is, and I probably should have I should have read this earlier, but I didn't. Rap battle, Willie Lynch plan in full effect. Well, oh, Lynch plan is not even go. a thing. It's a fake letter, but let's go. <laughs> That's, here we go. But it's a real thing. This, you know what? <laughs> the, is that what you'd be practicing? <laughs> no shit. <laughs> you know what? First Miracle. of all, Miracle be trying to divide us by our color. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I wish I'd be better. I'd be trying to <laughs> elevate. You. Are we ever gonna be able to get past Willie Lynch? Oh, <laughs> right, like, look, wait. Uh, okay, this is so funny. <laughs> Cause you know what? I, I, I kind of got to agree with his first statements. Occasionally, oh, um, occasionally you guys scare me with your immaturity. <laughs> I feel the same. It's That's fair. <laughs> If you're scared, go to church. <laughs> Occasionally, you guys scare me with your immaturity and willingness to jump into the latest muck distracting our community. Mm. I'm speaking about Drake versus Kendrick. Grade school level nuts. <laughs> oh, it was a rap battle devised by the powers to be to keep us away from Gaza and Palestine. And was, shut the fuck up. The presidential election is so much more important than drinking. Can you shut up? Hold up. It says, I can't believe you've used your platform to lean into the bullying. Have you watched us? The bullying of who? The yeah, dark like, skin bully has been on the show for 170 the episodes. Bully. The light skin bully, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's been on the show from the beginning. Do you feel, are you hurt? Do you need a PPP <laughs> plan? I'm just saying, you've Do been you bullying. Do you need to call HR? <laughs> Look, I thought Miracle gets in there. But, 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 before the show started, the series said, can we move the mic? I think it's blocking my face. <laughs> I didn't mm. say that. I said they got to see me in all my life. <laughs> you see? See the bullying? Mm. It's been <laughs> bullying going on in the show. That's all I was trying to say. Okay. Okay. Um, um, okay. Stop, grade school. Stop slapping the table. Grade school level analysis. This. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe you've used your platform to lean into the bullying. You don't have to believe it. You watched it. Both, both artists are talented. Why can't we appreciate them both? Because they're battling the each other. That's the part of hip hop in it. It's a contact sport. Because court. one's a colleague and one's a colleague. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. She says, she says, sickening to keep hearing someone isn't, quote, isn't, I'm sorry, sickening to keep hearing that someone, quote, isn't black enough. Drake's father is black. Oh, wow. When Tiger Woods, <laughs> the Cabo Asian, I, I'm not black, I'm Cabo Asian. I'm Tiger. I'm, <laughs> I'm not black, I'm Tiger. Okay. okay. <laughs> when Tiger Woods tried to separate himself from the black community, Many uh, in our culture were offended and played the one drop of blood card. Why is Good that Good afternoon, different? my octoroon. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that different now? Most of us in this community can't go more than two generations without finding some interracial folks in our heritage. This same venom, venom was used against Zendaya. What about Obama? His mom was white and he was raised by his white grandparents. Is he appropriating our culture? I'm sure he didn't grow up playing basketball in the street with the fellas. Actually, <laughs> Obama was hooping. Obama was hooping and smoking. And smoking and Newports. Newports. <laughs> like, I mean, come on. Like, come on. Like, what are we saying? Kind like, black. Wait, wait, wait. Here's the last thing. I'm concerned because in many ways, this has a trickle down effect in our culture. One example, I see black children today being ostracized for getting good grades or acting white because they are too articulate. Nobody does that English anymore. Language. She says she sees it. She says, I implore you to read, quote, to be popular or smart by Dr. Jawanza Kanjufu. We need to be careful. And so, I implore can- you to read, why are all the black kids sitting together at the lunch table? Mm. But anyways, first of all, why is it when we talk about like, he wasn't out playing hoops with the fellas. Like that's like, the only metric for blackness. Black like, yeah, like, you know, there's like, so many other black things that we do. Like J.K. Rowling was like, what if I like Motown and have braids? Can I be black? Like, 
Yes. Yes. It's not a monolithic yes. experience. And, no, and, you cannot be. And, and who, no. who wrote this? Was it Cynthia? Cynthia. Yes, it's I Cynthia. I taught in all black schools for seven years. And the, and the things that my children, my students love to do was read and articulate and learn. So please don't use this underperforming metric as a black person but, to, to reduce black education and sounding a specific way in our syntax and the way that we articulate as something that has to be commodified into just one venue of Americana. Like, that's not how it is but she is saying like there have been I and mean, many many black people have said like because i articulate a certain type of way so you know maybe they don't know the slang right obviously drake is a slang God. colonizer <laughs> <laughs> he, he gonna learn he gonna learn the slang one thing yeah. about drake he gonna learn it he gonna go on youtube he gonna get the pronunciations right but i mean there is there there's been many black people that have said like I was called acting white for yeah, articulating I mean, and being smart. Yeah, I mean, we hear that, but yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah. but we all know what you're trying to say, Cynthia, versus what we're we're critiquing on in this rap battle. Mm-hmm. The thing is, it's like maybe you're so far removed from hip hop that you don't know what's going on because yeah. right now you sound like some of our parents, like, oh, they talk too fast. I don't know what they're saying. So what you need to do is have a coke and a smile and shut the fuck up <laughs> when grown folks is talking, right? Because you have removed yourself from your rights to sit at this table and talk about the culture that we live in in America. Wow. Yo, let me keep going. Let me keep That's rocking. Kind of... Because no, because like what you're not gonna do is sit here and say that what we're sickening is is critiquing culture that daily impacts us. Yes. That something that as as people who consume the culture of hip hop, that participate in the culture of hip hop and have bills paid and still actively contribute to this culture, this is something that we have to talk about first and foremost. And to to show the importance of it, the president that you've been campaigning for, Joe Biden has used Kendrick's lyrics yeah. to show the importance of how culturally significant this moment is. True. So again, you're showing how detached you are from the culture that you're critiquing. Right, and, mm-hmm. and also, uh, before I pass it to Miracles, I know you have something to have say. Have several coats um, in several seats, Cynthia. Um, I, so, and also, we didn't say Drake wasn't black enough. That wasn't the critique, you know what I'm saying? Because you're right, and because Obama was very much... Um, but, you know, Obama went to Chicago. Like, Obama embedded himself in the black community in Chicago. And he so called when, himself Barry. Yeah. Like, and how so, many but, white people call Barry? But I'm just saying, so when Obama came out and he brushed his shoulders off, yeah. it, it didn't, it seemed na- natural to us. It didn't seem like right. he was trying to take something that was not his. He so, wiped up a black queen. Yeah. So nobody, <laughs> so no one, so no one isn't saying Drake isn't black enough. That's not what we're saying. I think the critique of Drake is that he comes in. He ain't and, the right kind of black. No, that he comes in and he he like he like he's not being himself. Yes. yes. Like precisely. Drake as an artist is not being himself and who he is. He's being um uh, um Jamaican. He's being he's doing. I mean, London we have drill. a heavy we he's have doing, a heavy influence yeah, yeah. from those cultures yeah, in yeah. Toronto. But I'm just saying he's doing London drill. Yeah, he's yeah, doing yeah. um Atlanta rap. He's doing Houston rap. He's doing you know. So it's like that's the thing. It's like who are you? And Kendrick is very much somebody that like from the beginning he's like this is who I am. Good kid, Mad City. This is my identity. Um, you had something. Yeah, I like to add that like context is key in conversations like this. Like the the name of the show is this week in white supremacy and white supremacy culture in the the white supremacy culture in the way that drake has been moving is he came in trying to separate himself from from black culture from the black community but now he uses it to capitalize yes he uses it to embed himself in those audiences and to keep us listening to his music and that's what kendrick was critiquing it's like listen yes. like you You wanted to separate yourself from blackness, but now you want to use blackness to your benefit to raise your album sales, to, Mm -hmm. you know, keep yourself relevant. It's like we all know and we see that that's not who you are. And when it comes to hip hop, we'd rather listen to people who are authentic, people that we can actually vibe with and connect with on that level. Yes. Last words to you, Miracle. If your kids don't know what educated black people look or sound like, that is a you problem. Oh, mm, shit. Not Come on. Introducing them to black people with education, number one. Number two, the one drop rule is a tool of white supremacy. So yes. how white people define blackness is not how we have to culturally define blackness either. Again, Tragic Mulatto, it sucks to it suck. Mm. And then lastly, this is a part of our culture. When Kendrick is talking about... 
where we are able to be and how we are able to exist at a time when people are talking about DEI, saying that black people haven't earned their way, black people haven't contributed to anything, right. Right. black people are not a benefit to the society. So again, there is a need to have these conversations and there is a cultural importance to these conversations. But again, you know, Maybe we're not for you, and maybe you should, you know, Turn watch Matt Lock or something else. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just Can, over it. The, 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 the beginning of the third verse for Not Like Us is exactly what Miracle was talking about. So once upon a time, all of us was in chains. Homie still doubled down, calling us some slaves. Right, right, right. Atlanta was the mecca building railroads and trains. Bear with me a second. Let me put you on game. Yes. And then he went into a 16-bar do- like exp- yeah. explanation of why he said what he said about right, this. Right, right. It's like, you couldn't do this in Toronto, so you had to go to another city right. to get your validation, to get yeah. your slang, to get your lingo, and, and bring that to the world. Yes. And because it was- you couldn't bring your Toronto identity to the world. Well, and it, it was also Drake that said, like, you rap like you're trying to get the slaves free. Absolutely. Which people was like, why is Fake that a bad Fake-ass activists, thing? yeah. Like, yeah, yeah like, why like, is that a bad like, thing? Why is it yeah. bad? So, and then you double down and call us slaves. And, like, and then I think the last thing I'll say is it's really not, again— um, it's not about isn't black enough to me. That's what we're not what we're saying. But what we've said from the beginning on this show, when we used to have our Terry Crews of the week, right, is that black people participate in white supremacy culture all of the time. Uh-huh. We just talked about Clarence Thomas, right? We've talked about black people. What's the what's Gums? Uh, Tim Scott, Tim right? Tim Scott, much mouth. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we've talked about black people. So again, it's not, they're black. Who's, Tim that, Scott who's is the guy black. running for governor of North Carolina right oh, now? Oh, he's Mark terrible. Something. Yeah, Mark yeah. something. Uh, Clarence Thomas is black, Mark, whatever. These are black people, but they're contributors to white supremacist culture. Yes. And so to the difference, it's like Drake, Drake can, came across as somebody who was behaving in the culture like a colonizer or white supremacist would behave. That's not, that's not, that he's not talking about his skin color. He's talking about how he's moving mm-hmm. in a culture that's an African-American culture with hip-hop is. It comes from African-American people, and you're not African-American, right? Mm-hmm. You're, you're black Canadian. And so I think, though, to me, that's kind of what he was saying. However, thank you for giving us a book to read. You know, we love Dr. Jawanza Kunjufu. We have our book today, our black pages. Oh, I guess it's right on cue, right? Black on black. <laughs> black on black. If Cynthia is black, which I, to me, she comes across as she black. She has to be black. Black on black is. I don't um, know no white Cynthia's. <laughs> on our resilience and brilliance in America. And the author is Daniel Black. Mm. There's a lot of black going on right here. Um, a tour de force, brilliant, passionate, deeply caring. Uh, Eddie Gloud uh, Jr. Um, describes this. So our uh, white pages, Greg Carr is giving notes on this. Um, so definitely, Black on Black, Our Resilience and Brilliance in America by Daniel Black. Black.